We ready to begin? <laughs> okay. Well, welcome back, saints. Um, this morning, for the or calling us up higher, I wanted to consider a text in 1 Samuel chapter 14. And this is the account where Jonathan and his armor bearer um, go up against the Philistines. Um, as I considered this text this week, I wanted to draw a parallel with Jonathan and his armor bearer to our faith and ourselves. <laughs> and the reason being is that these two men worked so closely together as if it was for it was as if it was war, for as if it was one man laboring to overcome. And Jonathan leads the way. So this morning as we go through this, I want to be thinking about Jonathan since he's the one leading the way. That's like our faith. And we're like the armor bearer following. Um, our faith is bold, as Brother Mike Amen. spoke of this morning. It calls us upward. We live by faith, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Every decision a believer comes to is made with an acute awareness of how it will affect our fellowship with the Lord and if it will be a benefit to our faith or not. Now, in this account... Just a, a little bit of background. The Philistines had raided the Israelites so that no one in the whole army had a sword or a spear except for Saul and Jonathan. So I'm going to start. Um, well, I'll say this first. <laughs> Sometimes in life, mm -hmm. it seems as if the enemy has the advantage. Mm -hmm. Just like this, when, he, when they came in and raided the Israelites. It seemed to the human eye that the Philistines had Israel right where they wanted them. And they were about ready to overtake them. But um, when I say enemy, we're not speaking of warring against flesh and blood for us. We're, the enemy to us is anyone or anything that would seek to divert us from seeking Christ. Yeah. It seems sometimes that they may have you backed into a corner, taken away all your resources, and are about ready to destroy you. So that's a little bit of background of where I wanted to pick up. And um, Verses 1, 4 through 6 is what I'm going to start at. It says, Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto a young man that bare his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And then verse 4, And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on the one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Bozes, and the name of the other, Sina. The forefront of the one was situate northward over Michmash, and the other southward over Gibeah. And Jonathan said to the young man that bare his armor, Come, let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Amen. Jonathan didn't take the route that the enemy would have thought he would have taken. He climbed up and down steep cliffs. <laughs> the way he would go would be very difficult. He knew who the enemy was and that God was able to see, save Israel even if it was with one sword. So talk about boldness. Jonathan had it. Faith doesn't look at the physical circumstances and get discouraged. It looks for a way of escape. It seeks for a deliverance. This is what Jonathan was doing. This is what our faith does. Faith is willing to cross dif difficult terrain in spiritual places if need be. Our faith calls us to go up and cast out the enemy. Faith can recognize the uncircumcised. And it also knows that God will undergird all of our efforts to overtake it. Faith never doubts God's ability to save, whether it is by many or by few. Amen. Verse 7 says, And his armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in thine heart. Turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thine heart. Mm, I also wanted to read um, the NIV. It says, Do all that you have in mind, his armor bearer said. Go ahead, I am with you heart and soul. Mm -hmm. 
We witness the armor bearer is in perfect agreement with Jonathan and it trusts his judgment. Mm-hmm. There's a connection or like a oneness yeah. between them. The new man is also in perfect harmony with faith. When faith makes the call, we love it. We love the call, and we are eager to enter into the work. The new man lives in us by our faith in God. Verses 8 through 10 says, Then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over these men, and we will discover ourselves unto them. If they say thus unto us, tarry until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and will not go to them. But if they say unto us, come up unto us, then we will go up, for the Lord hath delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. Jonathan knows what the Lord is able to do, but he's not hasty in his actions. He wants to make sure he's in the will of God before he goes, because that's going to determine if God is going to be with him or not. Faith is the same way. It is patient. It tests the spirits. It proves all things. Faith waits upon the Lord. Um, 11 and 12 says, And both of them discovered themselves under the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they had them, hid themselves. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us, we'll show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, Come after me, for the Lord has delivered unto the, them unto the hand of Israel. Amen. Jonathan receives his answer and moves forward with the assurance that God has delivered them into their hands. And I thought about this taunt from the enemy. Um, the, it, they, he taunted Jonathan and his armor bearer, but that did not sway their faith. Actually, instead of their words sounding threatening to them, like scaring them, it only proved to them that God was going to work on their behalf because that's how they knew that God had delivered them. Our enemies may try to scare us or discourage us, but faith doesn't waver. As soon as faith gets the answer from the Lord, it moves forward. Amen. 13 and 14 says, And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet, and the armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer slew after him. And that first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within, as it were, a half acre of land which a yoke of oxen might plow. So here we see the two men working hand in hand to bring down the enemy. Jonathan led the charge and brought the enemy down, and his armor bearer followed right behind him and was killing from behind. And as we consider Jonathan going up first, I'm reminded of our shield of faith. Uh, Ephesians 6, 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So in order to quench a fiery dart, you have to have your shield of faith in front of you. Another thing I observed is um, these men climbed up the steep rock, which was the second one. There was two between them. They had to go over the first one and then go up the second one. Um, with their hands and their feet, they still had the strength to fight when they reached the top. So not only is faith bold, it's very versatile and it's very robust. As we climb rough terrain and take down the enemy, we can be reminded that the Lord is going to provide the strength that we need at the precise moment we need it. Amen. Um, I'm going to finish this account, I'm going to read 15, 16, 20, and 23. It says, And there was trembling in the host, in the field, and among all the people, the garrison and the spoilers. They also trembled, and the earth quaked. So it was a great trembling. And the watchmen of Saul in Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went on beating down one another. And Saul and all the people that were with him assembled themselves, and they came to the battle, and behold, every man's sword was against his fellow, and there was a great discomfiture. Mm-hmm. And then 23, so the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over into Beth Bethaven. So God caused such a trembling, so much that even the earth quaked, that that was a, a big trembling. <laughs> that the enemy ended up destroying themselves. 
We are not alone in this battle. Faith is what enables us to put our hands to the plow, and then God's the one that works the deliverance. Jonathan and his armor bearer were bold, and God did grant them the victory over these 20 men. But in the larger scheme of things, God overtook the whole Philistine army by turning them on themselves. This account is an example of why we don't want to despise the day of small beginnings. Jonathan had one sword, and the faith that knew God could deliver all of Israel, and that is what God did that day. Amen. And as long as we continue to walk by faith, God will continue to deliver us too. Amen. So, um, Sister Tasha will come with our singing now. Amen.